is always a pleasure to have Jim Lockhart, Vice Chairman of WL Ross, with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you again. Great to see you and great to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, talk to us a little bit for those who may not be familiar with your company, what your company mm -hmm. is and what you specialize in. Okay. Well, Wilbur Ross uh, runs WL Ross, and uh, we're distressed. Our troubled companies oftentimes uh, need some capital and need some better management. And we've invested in a lot of industries over the years. Uh, I run the financial services side, which since the crisis has really been our biggest investment, probably 60% or so of our last two funds. But we also have a shipping fund. We do real estate. Uh, troubled mortgages, uh, and uh, so we keep pretty active. Uh, some energy that's very <laughs> active these yeah, days. Very active. <laughs> so uh, we, we like to go where the action is. At the moment, I would say in the U.S. and financial services, we really are more on the harvesting side, uh, given that uh, you know, values have come up, uh, there's less distress, and so uh, we've had five bank platforms, maybe 19 different banks, sold one of them, took another one public, uh, several mortgage companies. And so we're spending more time in Europe now. Uh, we invested in Bank of Ireland, and that was very successful. Uh, we're an investor in Virgin Money, which is a mortgage uh, provider and credit card company using the Virgin mm -hmm. brand in the UK. And uh, it's about 26 billion pounds, so it's a pretty big bank. Uh, and we just IPO'd that in November. And then a little farther afield, uh, we have uh, some smaller investments in Eurobank, which is a Greek bank, and, and Bank of Cyprus. So uh, it's keeping us very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, are there opportunities out there? And it sounds like there are, and you are very busy. Yeah. Okay. So talking about a leadership role, because that was the panel that you were involved with right. today. You're talking about leadership. Is there a theme or a method or, 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 or something that the good, the responsible companies, the strong companies that are going to be here, what are the, the traits, would you say, of a strong leadership? Well, it, it's a good question. I think you, you have to have a strategic plan. You have to have objectives. You have to have all that business school thing. They have to be simple enough for people to understand, especially in the middle and lower management. And sometimes it doesn't happen. Uh, but beyond that, I think uh, you have the plan, but you also need to have enough agility to be able to make decisions, make changes. You know, in our case, mainly we're dealing with troubled companies when we invest in. Right. So, uh, and you know that does mean sometimes you have to make some senior management changes potentially. Uh, one of the things I think a lot of companies miss is they don't get down to the people that really know what's going on in the organization. Uh, and uh, that's one of the things I, I really try to do in my various jobs, whether it's running a government agency or overseeing Fannie and Freddie or uh, you know investment banking, whatever it is is to really find the people that know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's too many filters in, in the American <laughs> corporation at this point. Well, you brought up Fannie and Freddie. Let's talk about that for a little okay. bit, the fallout lessons learned. Well, I, I think the key lesson there was that uh, they were hybrids that didn't really work. The public-private uh, allowed effectively them to have a put on the U.S. government, and they took advantage of it. They uh, took too many risks, and Congress, because they were providing affordable housing, didn't give the regulator the, the powers to cut them back the way that we needed to. They were writing mortgages five and a half trillion on 1% capital. And you know even with a little hiccup, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, Congress actually did give us the powers. They created a new agency uh, end of July and we put them in conservatorship less than 30 days later. So it was a little late. <laughs> And, you know, Congress is still a little late when you think about it. <laughs> Six and a half years later. Six and a half years. That's amazing. Uh, and, and they still haven't fixed it. I mean, you know, they still have the government really providing almost 80-some percent of the mortgages in this country. You know, in socialized Europe, there's no country that anywhere close to that. I mean, we, we are a real strange uh, housing market here, and, and we, it needs to change, but it's going to take... Congress some will in Congress. Right, the American dream, everyone's supposed to have their own home. You know, speaking internationally like that as a global corporation, do you face differences as far as leadership roles with different cultures in Europe than here? Uh, yeah, you do. I mean, uh, the board culture uh, is a board culture, but there, there, there are definitely differences. Uh, one thing I really like about Europe is they really do split the chairman and CEO job. And I think that's important in, in many companies. Uh, <clears throat> In the UK, they actually have 
people that are professional directors, they say, call it going plural. And the idea is that you know, they worked for a bank or whatever it is for you know, 20, 30 years and decided that they want a little more free time, so they take three or four board ships and, and do that for a living. And, and that gets people you know, that are really can spend some time. I mean, these days the board books are about this thick. Yeah, <laughs> and thank heaven for iP iPads, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, so, but there are different cultures. Uh, uh, the, the U.S. actually is somewhat firmer uh, in, in voting culture than some of the uh, Europeans. You know, they have uh, formal votes. Well, in the Europe, some of the Europeans I've been on, it just sort of everybody assumes you're yes until you say no. <laughs> right, 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 right. But Unbelievable. So, uh, as far as um, so then, as far as the culture, though, I mean, even though we have different cultures, the same the same basics are in place as far as being a good leader. Yeah, I, I think very much so. Uh, you know, again, you know, some cultures are a little more formal. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the informality of Americans sometimes helps, and as they say, in getting into that middle level right. more. But uh, we have a uh, Jane Ann Gaudier, who's the CEO of Virgin Money, and the culture she has created there—it's a Virgin culture, as you can imagine—and and so place is painted red, and and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know it's very exciting for the employees. They you know they have every month uh, award ceremonies, and they're right. a really very uh, creative group of people. So, Of course, one of the biggest headlines is the, uh, you know, the, the falling oil prices. How is that affecting corporations across the world, all different kinds of corporations? Well, uh, I think one of the things that's happening is that uh, we're getting into deflation or at least disinflation mm -hmm. in many countries. And, and from a financial services standpoint, that means interest rates are staying down lower for longer, which is not good for mm -hmm. banks. Uh, so that's one issue we have. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's certainly helped uh, a lot of countries, uh, the uh, idea of energy is cheaper. Uh, and so I think it's helping the European economy, which really needs help. Uh, it's helping the U.S. a little bit, but on the other hand, we get a stronger dollar now. And so that's maybe a little negative uh, because of our higher interest rates and safety haven that we are. So overall, uh, you know, it, it's it's good. We, we're actually starting, like several other private equity funds, a mm -hmm. uh, energy debt fund, looking at some of the fallen angels. And uh, we spent enough time in the energy space over the last three or four years. We have a pretty strong team that's looking at it. I know a while back we talked about uh, you know major distressed industries such as healthcare mm -hmm. and retail. Are they pulling out anytime soon, or we're going to keep seeing problems <laughs> there? Uh, yeah, w probably keep seeing problems. Uh, we don't really do retail. We, we sort of like basic industries right, more. Right. Uh, we looked at health care. We thought Obamacare was going to cause more problems than it actually ended up causing. Uh, so we actually never did in the health care investment. Uh, we're now looking uh, at building products is one thing we're looking at. Metals and mining is also very much troubled. And as I said before, we have a shipping fund. So that is, you know, we got a lot of different spaces looking at, but uh, retail is something we just haven't been able to figure out how to do. The shipping line, is that in Greece? Is it? Uh, it's a fund. Uh, the, our partner is actually a Norwegian, but we're, we're investing in ships around the world, really, and shipping companies. We have three shipping companies and a whole series of uh, tankers and bulk uh, carriers. and So we're keeping busy. It sounds like you're keeping busy. Anything you're especially excited about coming into the future as we go later into 2015, or the you know economic climate? Any changes you foresee? Well, certainly, uh, you know the U.S. is recovering and is recovering. Mm -hmm. It took a long time, but we're recovering well. Uh, we'd certainly like to see interest rates go up for a variety of reasons for mm -hmm. our banks, uh, uh, but it's going to take a take a reasonable amount of time, and and you know the thing we fear most is, you know, what's going on in Europe at the moment uh, with, uh, you know, the euro just holding together and, uh, and that is a concern. Okay. Jim, tremendous insight as always. It's always a pleasure to have you here on the MA Advisor. Thank you. Thank you.